Of, of aquatic creatures or species, farmers or fish farmers use these systems to produce fish, tilapia, uh, shrimp, uh, even pearls. Uh, and they are really, uh, these systems have been advancing in the recent years. Back home, where I come from, Saudi Arabia, Oman, they have these systems but located just beside the lake where uh, fish farmers can really have them produce, produce fish using semi-controlled environments where they can control the way they feed fish uh, and they'll, the, the urines where they harvest. Now they come advanced to the extent that now you go just beside Virginia Tech, there's a plant uh, where, where you have many tanks of fish where, it's under, where they are all controlled. Uh, so the aquacultural analysts would re uh, configure the type of food to breed some, some specific types of species. Uh, we are working on the aquacultural economic cost model, the AECM, there's a mistake here. And uh, it really helps and supports managers and producers of these uh, types of businesses to give and support them to give support them to, uh, to help them make strategic decisions regarding your business. The model gives them feedback about their financial ratios, uh, their budgeting, uh, and also uh, advice and uh, gives uh, also forecasts of <coughs> loans uh, and takes inputs from the businesses uh, from many sources regarding if it's just a plant or the type of fish or, or or even the cost of equipment, everything, until it just gives us a forecast at the end of up to third, three years up to, up to now, uh, from, uh, as long as this model now focuses, focuses on. Uh, what should the investors really give? Why, why is this really important? 31% of total world production of aquatic, aquatic creatures are from these systems. And when you go to our restaurants now, you will be eating uh, let's say 31% uh, you're eating fish from these uh, type of systems. And, you should, and these investors should expect a 10% yearly growth rate of these fish production. And this is why this model seems to be really, really important for uh, interested investors. Uh, the history of the model, the, the model began late 1990s. Uh, began collecting and analyzing data associated with the, the REST system. Uh, it calculates costs and provides financial ratios. How do you use the system? At least you would do two people, a financial advisor and an agricultural analyst who can really help you put in the information, the needed information to the system. So the goals of this version, well, now we were working for uh, at most three months, I believe, and work on it as full, you really work, uh, you need to be full time for that, but uh, we focus our attention on reducing some of the errors and also improving some components that I will hand it now to Turan, that he will speak upon the things that we really focused on in our project. Thank you, Sam. Uh, now that he has already set the scope of the project that what, all, uh, what does this uh, research learning aquaculture system mean? So I'll just take it up with the model. See what the what we got was uh, already created model that was uh, version 2.23 of it, and uh, it has certain problems with it. So what we had to do was uh, we had to work on those problems. Plus we need to uh, if we can find certain ways to improving that particular model, we had to find those things. So these were some of the problems that we faced in that particular model. 
mod was pretty bulkier. Uh, like it has got seven sheets with it. So seven, sorry, seven uh, workbooks that has got various worksheets within them. So they all were interacting with each other. So because there are, there are so many workbooks and worksheets, so the cell references in between them and the links that were there, some of them were not working. So whenever you click on some button or uh, maybe you run some uh, particular process, it throws you an error, maybe a VP error or maybe some uh, particular Excel error. So all those kind of things were there in the system. Uh, and because there were so many sheets and so many workbooks, the performance of the system was also getting uh, bothered up because of that. Then there were certain unwanted elements. While we discussed the same with uh, Dr. Charlie, he told us that there are certain things that we can remove from the system that are not being used. Because this is a uh, this was uh, originally designed as a decision support system, but later on, as uh, there were certain things put into the system which were of daily use, like daily readings of tanks or something like that. So all those things were put into the system which were not required now. Uh, and finally, the system was pretty static. Like we fill in the initial values uh, there, and based on that, it calculated certain values and gives us the result. And it was completely static. There was no randomness uh, included into this, or any optimization was not there. So those were the major uh, things that we need to work on in this system. So what we did was uh, whatever problems I uh, explained you just now, we worked on them, and uh, we were successfully uh, we were pretty successful in resolving many of them. Uh, which would be shown to you uh, in just a while. Plus, uh, when we talk about enhancements, we inclu uh, included randomness into the system, where we uh, added a particular simulation model, where uh, we put in some upper limits and lower limits, and based on that, it calculates the values that are required for model. Now, the world is all up to pictures, right? I can give you a huge amount of data and tables and everything, but unless I get, I, if I give you a graph based on that or some graphical representation, you will get the data in just, uh, just, uh, just on the go. So you need not to go through all the tables. So we tried to edit some graphic graphs as well into the system, and uh, we're still working on it. So the revised model, uh, something looks like this. Uh, these the blue blocks, uh, blue, blue holes that you see here uh, are the sheets that are there. As I said earlier, there were seven sheets, so we were able to reduce two of them, so now there are only five sheets which are there. Uh, the main sheet that is there, AECM version 3.0, this is the main sheet where the user puts in all the data. right? So whatsoever data is input from the user is being put in here, and all these three sheets on the second level that you see, loan information, cost of production, and financial statements. These are the sheets that take up all the information from the uh, user interface and uh, gives different kinds of results with some statements that you can find cost of production and loan information like all those calculations are being done here and these uh, all uh, all these three sheets are also interdependent so they take data from each other as well so mm, these are pretty complicated kind of a uh, system between these three and there are a lot of uh, cell references and a lot of formulas in there so we will not go into the detail of all that but uh, just to give you a brief idea and finally, we have the financial analysis sheet, which gives us uh, the different ratios that we all uh, know about, like the uh, return on equity and all those NOPACs and uh, NOPMs and all those ratios are being given to us through the financial analysis sheet, which actually finally helps us with the uh, making our decisions whether to go ahead with this model or not, whether to go ahead of, uh, with the recirculation or not. Right? So this is what uh, the revised model does. So I'll now pass it on to Chandan, who will uh, actually give you the idea about what the model does as a whole. So here's.
So here's our model, the uh, aquaculture economic with uh, cost model. And as Tarun has already explained, uh, the most important part of this uh, uh, thing is the user interface because this is where all the user inputs go into. And uh, the randomness that we have uh, incorporated into this model, mod, uh, model is on the variable cost part because the variable costs are the primary cost where you can reduce your, uh, you know, if you can reduce your variable cost in a short run, then it will help your system. So it's doing the variable cost information thing that we have included the upper limit and lower limits for the users. So the users have two options. Uh, they can either, if they are not sure of the actual values, they can enter the upper limit with the lower limit and click on this button and generate, which generates a random variable in the actual inputs. Or uh, they can directly enter the inputs. So similarly, we have other uh, user inputs there uh, for equipment costs and electrical uh, costs, loans, and all the factors that are involved in the production of uh, agriculture systems. Uh, so as a, as a uh, thing in the future, we're working on budget estimates. This would be the actual user interface for those variable components of the thing, uh, of the model. And this will fit in a uh, 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 user interface, I'm sure, sorry, the buffers of this problem that probably be my thing. <laughs> so uh, so uh, that's the budget estimate which we are working on. Now the user interface, uh, user has inputted the data. Uh, we have the financial statements, which are now calculated and ready for analysis. And once all the financial statements, the cost of production, the loan information, everything is updated, we can actually go about Once everything has been done, it's a financial analysis sheet which calculates all the ratio. For example, if you want to check profitability, it will give uh, the user the ratios. The uh, cells which are marked red are some of the uh, ratios that we need to look into for the system. And those marked green are OK uh, for a financial analyst to when you reviews this. So in this case, the rate, uh, the return on assets has to be worked upon because that's uh, a huge negative. Now this data is a uh, uh, test, test data, so it has no uh, guarantee that the system will uh, actually uh, uh, provide such negative ratios. So we need not worry about that. Once the financial analysis is done, we provide uh, the uh, user with a summary of the business model here in uh, our case with the, the data that we have used it's a uh, loss making entity so uh, it tells the uh, aquaculture producer that the operation has a negative working capital and stuff like that so it does all the decision making for the producer to check uh, and make improvements the other major thing that we have added to this system is uh, The simulation part. Uh, here we have uh, uh, calculated the income of the first year, and we provide the forecasted incomes of the next two years. Uh, we run the simulations. We run it for 15 simulations. Now, because it makes everything variable uh, sequentially, it takes a bit of time. Uh, if uh, we need to improve upon the time of the system. What we'll be doing is we'll be using uh, parallel instances to update the cells so that we can reduce our <coughs> time and do not run so slow. Okay, so this has been turned because the data the buttons, buttons have to be returned. I'm going to have some lamps. 
So, so those are simulated numbers on fictitious <laughs> layers. All right? I mean, I'm like, that's so much. You're really in the hole there. I mean, just, but, but just consider it's just fake number. No, but, but just consider the time it takes to process because it's a good yeah, yeah, where we just change it. something. Many sheets gets affected until we reach 24. So now we've got gosh, dark. I'm a little uncomfortable. I'm going to click if you want to run the <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't find the button. Really? It's increasing in significant respect. Oh, that's cool. It's a classic. Yeah. So we probably have to make sure. Couldn't see the forest off that tree. So draw those charts for the day. We'll be able to draw the chart. But you give the estimates, the ranges between which uh, uh, the estimated income should lie. So that's the another thing that we can do. And the other major thing that we need to do is work on the health uh, documentation. Uh, uh, the developer thing has already been shown by the room in that which you see that model, which explains the model. And we have user documentation for users, users to use this model. And if uh, the various buttons and the things that uh, you just need to give us lots of leave and we just complete it for the final certification. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, the model uh, basically for you. And uh, I'd like to thank you for the uh, appreciate that you have been present here for our thing. So, any questions? I'm terribly sorry, but I probably only have time for one question. You got it. Okay. The, the simulation method that you're using, is, 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 it, is it like a random number stream? I mean, how, yeah. How it, 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 it generates random numbers based on the upper limit and lower limit. It uses the random generation property of uh, data analysis you find in my Microsoft Access. So it checks uh, the system to see if uh, that add-on has been activated by the user. If not, it activates the add-on and it does random uh, number generation. So right now we're just using the run function of Excel, but at that uh, particular thing, we can use the crystal ball as well. We can use all those normal distributions or any other distribution we want. So it's just a matter of formula that you need to